Hi, I'm Tyler Childers. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. Tyler Childers is a storytelling singer and songwriter from Lawrence County, Kentucky. His debut album, Purgatory, released last year, was produced by the Grammy award-winning Sturgill Simpson and David Ferguson. We catch up with Tyler in the middle of a UK tour to discuss the writing of his album, Appalachian Mountain Music, and, as is customary in this series, Tyler performs a cover of Willie Nelson's Time of the Preacher, followed by a spellbinding version of his very own Banded Clovis. Tyler. Hey, man. Welcome to the Blues Kitchen. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Yeah, doing so good. you're right in the middle of a quite an extensive UK tour at the moment. You feeling good? Yeah, it's been yeah. fun. Uh, it's been pretty tame. We've had uh, a lot of driving days. We've uh, got 11 shows, 20 days, so it's not bad. Nice. In a short while, you're going to be doing a version of a Willie Nelson tune for us, and yeah. I believe a part of one of your own as well. But before we get to that, I mean, congratulations on Purgatory. Amazing album. Thanks, man. Um, it's been on repeat since uh, I got my copy about a week and a half ago. It's quite a cast assembled for that record with Sturgill Simpson producing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could tell us how that album came to be. The, the songs, they're just a, a collection of songs that I picked from uh, you know, the catalogue I've been working on for the last seven years. Uh, some of them I've been touring and playing for a long time. Uh, some of them I wrote <clears throat> not long before we went in. I had uh, I'd tried to get an album out a time or two, and there was just always something missing. I felt, you know, so we went back to the drawing board and tried again, and and it didn't work out. And uh, third time's a charm. Got with uh, <laughs> got with Sturgill and got it knocked out. What was wrong about the first couple of runs at making a record? I really didn't have a have an idea of of what I wanted to do. It was more like just expensive demos, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then the second one, I felt <clears throat> there was just something sonically missing from it. Um, it. It just felt like demos too. One thing that that helped a whole lot was uh, the studio musicians that uh, Sturgill picked and got. And together. did you go down to Nashville for this? Yeah, we and went to butcher shop uh, Ferguson's. And this is Ferguson that worked with Johnny Cash as well, right? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, I want to ask you when you first or what your first memories of hearing music were. And it probably would be ridiculous for me to assume that it was mountain music because just like anyone else, you were growing up in, um, I imagine, what, the 90s through, could yeah. have been grunge or anything like that. At what point did you start connecting with the music that was coming out or that is very much rooted in the mountains? I grew up um, in church. And so early on, I was listening to a lot of Southern gospel, a lot of hymns. Was that enforced listening? Was that something that you had to do because of going to church? Or was it something that you genuinely really, really loved and enjoyed? At first, it was definitely something that was, you know, forced. Because, <laughs> you know, as I, I, I could probably, as a kid, have thought of better things to do with a Sunday morning than hang out in church. But it, it was my favorite part of the service was the singing, you know, and the conviction in it and the heart and just the, the melodies and the songs. Then I, you know, I got into uh, my dad's closet and found all his old tapes and got, you know, into you know, Skinner and CCR and like Southern Rock and yeah. and that kind of you know, took me down like a rabbit hole of listening to a lot of rock. I think that the more traditional gospel that I'd grown up with and the bluegrass that my uh, papa had uh, listened to around me, sunk its teeth in me when I was 15 when he passed away, just because uh, it was uh, it was nostalgic of you know hanging out with my papa, hmm. and uh, it, was, it took me back to my roots, I guess. And when did you start writing? When did you first pick up a guitar? Or was guitar the first thing that you picked up? Yeah, my my papa uh, bought me a guitar when I was five. Wow! And uh, one of his army buddies showed me uh, G C and D. Where you go. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I didn't really start taking it serious and, and uh, trying to give a good go at it, really, until I was probably 13 or 14. Yeah. And I was always writing. I always really enjoyed reading and uh, writing stories. And so when I started playing uh, guitar, it just was kind of the 
sensible thing to do, I guess, was just start writing my own songs. Do you have any memories of the first song you wrote? Oh, yeah. And is it something that you would still be proud of or something that you put, a, put in a box and it's, forget it's about? It's something I got in a box. <laughs> yeah. I've got it in a box. It feels like quite an exciting time for country music and roots music as a whole at the moment. You're off playing with Margot Price later in the year, someone yeah. that's really coming through. Obviously, we talked about Sturgill. You've said that you wanted to make music that your friends would be into. What do you think are sometimes maybe like the common pitfalls of someone that is going out to make country music, so to speak, or, or roots music? I, I try to write uh, with me in mind first. You know, I'm writing them just for therapy, first and foremost, just to get things out and on paper and make sense of it. That's very honest. And yeah. secondly, I'm writing it for, you know, my friends and my family, and it's, it's songs for us, you know. And because of that, um, it has its own flavor. It comes from its own place. It speaks first and foremost to to a specific group of people, and then just by being honest and trying to share my life experience, it can uh, hopefully bridge a gap and, and someone from somewhere else, you know, can find uh, something relatable in it. And I think that people that are, that are making music like that, like Margot mm -hmm. and Kelsey Walden and uh, my buddies back home, like John R. Miller, Mm -hmm. And Luna, I mean, that's what what gives their writing that character. Um, let's have a bit of a chat about Willie Nelson. You're going to perform a tune in just a moment. Is Willie Nelson something when you're growing up in Kentucky that you just kind of absorb via osmosis, or is it something you actively have to go out and kind of search for and dig a little deeper? I was introduced to Willie Nelson's music through my great uncle from okay. uh, Dayton, Ohio. Right. It doesn't matter if you're talking about boots or guitars or cameras or doing interviews. If you're talking about anything in this whole entire world and my Uncle Dennis, my, my Uncle Dennis will find a way to bring that conversation around to the time that he got to golf with Willie Nelson. It's just like, it's like <laughs> top five greatest <laughs> things in life. It'd be like... Oh, you know, that's a nice bicycle. I remember I was uh, talking to Willie Nelson that time that uh, we were right. off, you know. And so he was just, you know, early on somebody that um, <laughs> I was familiar with. And uh, I've actually, uh, somewhere, uh, my mom's got uh, uh, my Uncle Dennis's scorecard that uh, Willie had that's signed. That's brilliant. Yeah, they were, because he's, you know, he's a big golfer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my Uncle Dennis is, a huge golfer, and uh, he was golfing at this golf course around Dayton somewhere. And uh, Willie was was the in the crew, the group ahead of him, and they ended up meeting at this hole. <laughs> then that was just all day. They would, uh, you know, they'd meet up and they'd talk a little bit, and then they'd move on. So yeah, he golfed with Willie getting Nelson. lean on the the golf course. They make their way around. Uh, you know, uh, Uncle Dennis never. Uh, Never uh, told me whether he did or didn't. <laughs> but. You're going to do um, Time with the Preacher from Red Headed Stranger. When was the first yeah. time you heard that tune? Uh, in a garage, actually. Yeah, yeah that one in particular. Um, a buddy of mine uh, played it, and I was like, shit, man. I want to play that. When you say so. played it, he played it himself? Yeah, he played it himself. Oh, okay, so it was actually that you heard someone else playing it maybe mm -hmm. before you'd heard the recorded yeah. version. Okay, cool. Well, I think it's probably about time that we had some music, if that's cool. Yeah, it's fine with me. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to introduce your tune. Yeah, I'm going to play uh, Willie Nelson's Time of the Preacher and uh, Banded Clovis uh, off Purgatory. Someone she left behind. 
high And cry like a baby Scream like a panther In the middle of the night For a ride, it was the time of the preacher, the year of a one. The preaching is over, the killing's begun. Chase of the pills and the powder, corn liquor. 